This video is for those of you that like to pick up some stuff from 3D Warehouse or outside sources and you are downloading something that has multiple objects that you don't need and it has one object that you do need and how can we isolate those and I'm going to go over a couple of misconceptions about you know several approaches I've seen people try to take and why they don't work. So here we go. I've got this coffee table assembly here right and I want just this coffee table in the middle. I don't want this other part. In fact, I don't even want any of the decorations on top of this as well. I'm going to download. There's a couple different uh, file types we could do. SketchUp file, and then oftentimes you might see a DAE file, which is a Collada file. So I download that. Ends up in my downloads folder. And then what do I do, and this is a common thing that people do, is that they might go to their downloads folder and then they might find that file, which is a SketchUp extension, and drag it straight into Chief Architect. Now this does work, but I'd like to mention that this automatically is going to import this as a fixture symbol category, okay, fixture. So that's important to note because in case you're actually trying to import some kind of an electrical symbol, you don't want to import that as a fixture. You want it to import it as the symbol category electrical. So another way to do that is to go into file import and then import 3D symbol and go find your SketchUp or Collada file. Do it that way and then you get the prompt that whether or not you want to change the symbol category and you would change it to electrical in that case. One more way of doing that is we can always reconvert a symbol. So we can go into our edit toolbar, which this is usually docked at the bottom of your screen, and we can hover over this guy right here, convert selected to symbol, and then that gives us the option to pick that symbol category where it might have been a, an electrical feature. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so the next part of this, and this is another one of those common misconceptions that I've seen is that hey I want to get rid of this other coffee table well this should be easy I just get to hit this explode block thing right so edit CAD block well this is not some kind of explode architectural block tool that you might have seen where we make an architectural block out of multiple objects this is we're changing the representative 2d CAD for this symbol. So if you go into the symbol, when the symbol is created, a number of things happen. One is that it converts any polygons that create this mesh that make up this symbol. It converts those into triangles and then it auto generates some kind of two dimensional CAD representation of this. So we can generate this CAD block, okay? Now, I don't want to get too off path, but we are going to talk about triangle counts, polygon counts, because that's going to matter in Chief Architect. You can't just go downloading any 3D warehouse item without considering how many poly count there is in that item. Okay, but before we get to that, let's just go and see. This is kind of the misconception is, hey, if I just get rid of all of this, this stuff in the middle here, if I just delete this and then save this, shouldn't that just get rid of it in 3D, right? And in fact, no, it doesn't. When we pull a little camera view, yeah, even though it looks like it's just two little coffee tables next to each other, it still has all that 3D geometry. So that is not a way that we get to get rid of the geometry coming from the symbol that we downloaded. So how do we get rid of that geometry? Well, we have a tool called the Delete Surface Tool, okay? Delete Surface Tool. And as I hover over surfaces, these are faces essentially, okay? And actually it's a collection of faces. We'll get into the details on that in just a little bit. I get to just click and it will delete part of that geometry. Cool, that's all we needed, right? So I just get to carefully go delete all that geometry and I'll be done. Unfortunately not. Once we rebuild the 3D and we rebuild the 3D by any number of different ways, I could place a cabinet in here or I could place some kind of architectural feature or I can just modify something that's already in here like my terrain in this case. And look what happens, it rebuilt the 3D and all of a sudden this little dome is back in place. So how do we make our changes be permanent? Well, we're gonna use that delete surface tool, delete, delete, delete some surfaces. And now I get to select this object, which still shows a bounding box. This is our bounding box. That's how Chief resizes something based on a bounding box. I get to choose that and then I get to hit that convert selected to symbol. Now I'm not ready to change this to the symbol category I want, which is furniture. So I can just leave this as fixture and I can leave add to library and show advanced options unchecked. 
and press OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to load it as an object that's being placed into my mouse, right? So now we're in a place object mode. And then in my edit toolbar, I could in fact toggle replacement mode and just replace the symbol that's here. And when we go open it, guess what? We have now gotten rid of that second little coffee table. Now I have a lot more things to get rid of. And you can see here the delete surface tool is going to take into account all these little tiny leaves, right? And so how do we get rid of all these in an efficient way? And this is where I want to come back and kind of show you what the difference is between a symbol that has smoothing turned on and a symbol that does not. And let me go back to our SketchUp 3D warehouse where we get to see a polygon count. I want to be really clear about what this is. This is a polygon count. Now, what is a polygon? Well, it's not a triangle. It really is pretty much anything that has closed edges, right? It makes a shape, it makes a closed polyline, if you will. And you want to kind of um, uh, understand that in terms of what Chief, Ar Chief Architect calls a polygon, which would be a closed polyline. That means it could be five-sided, six-sided, who knows? Right, so however many sides that is, what happens when we bring this in? If you have a five-sided polygon, all of a sudden that's going to be, you know, a bunch of little triangles instead. So this number is just the base number. Once it actually gets converted to triangles, it can be considerably more than this. So even though this says seventy-one thousand, in the case that we brought this into Chief Architect, and maybe I could go back a few steps before we replace this object right now if we go and look at this even though it said 71,000 in SketchUp when we go look at the 3D panel down at the bottom number of faces it's in fact 82,000 faces so there were some faces that weren't just triangles now 82,000 faces is a lot you get enough of these it's going to really slow a scene down just to give you an example of what a heavy scene might be is if you're on an M1 chip or you're in a 2000 series RTX graphics card, a scene of about 2 million polys is really going to start challenging your system. If you're on, you know, an M2 chip, lower 3000 series, you know, scene of 2.5 million. If you're on um, one of your higher RTX cards, you know, consumer grade RTX cards, you're going to be in the 3 million range. How do we know how many uh, how much surface count is? Well, when I just refresh a scene down at the bottom here, it's telling me how many surface there are. So I'm at 106,000 surfaces, and a large part of that is just how heavy this particular symbol is. Chief Architect makes symbols in less than 10,000 poly count, which is really, really low, which should give you some appreciation about what their engineers do in terms of creating symbols that are really low weight and make your scene nice and move fast and rebuild fast. So how do we get this to a lower poly count? Well, you're going to need a third party software for that, or you're going to have to be really careful about the objects you choose from 3D Warehouse. Now, the next part about this is let's just open this object up. I want to change symbol surface smoothing. Okay. And I'm going to change this to zero just so you can see how many triangles are in this symbol. You're going to see that it's rebuilding right now and it's going to create a bunch of vector lines in just a second. Now, what this is doing is it's saying that any faceted edge or angle, and I've gone over this in several other videos, you might see me say this over and over again, but uh, any faceted angle, whatever this angle is, if it's less than our set smoothing angle, Chief Architect is going to smooth it. It's going to round those edges. So you can see here, we've got edges that are in plane with each other. So if a smoothing angle of one is going to get rid of those edges that are in plane with each other, right? So if I set that to one, it would rebuild this and you're going to see this surface top at the very top. It's suddenly going to look like it's one single face. And in fact, it's multiple faces, but Chief Architect is just not drawing vector lines on top of your symbol anymore. So you can kind of see how this is working. Now, what happens when you leave this symbol smoothing down really low is that when we use the delete surface tool, the delete surface tool takes any kind of smooth surface as one single face to delete. So when we have this really low, it means we're going to all of a sudden do a lot more work with the delete surface tool if we wanted to remove this geometry because it's going to make us pick these individual triangles to delete. 
So now the inverse is true as well. If I set the symbol smoothing almost to 180 degrees, which would be flat, right? Now every surface is as smooth as it could be so long as it has some kind of a joined edge, which means that um, the model itself has no gaps in it. It's modeled correctly. Now with a smoothing angle that high, the delete surface tool is going to delete a lot more in one click, right? So we're going to get a lot more use out of this tool. We might be able to get rid of more of this geometry a lot faster. Now a trick that I like to use is I like to actually turn on a line over as a method and that just helps us see things that we might have missed when we're using this tool to delete things. Now ultimately I picked a symbol that was going to be challenging because I wanted to show you that yes you could go through and delete all these little leaves and it's going to take you a while. But the thing I'd like to point people to in, in uh, case they need it is that Blender is a free software. Yes, if you had SketchUp, you could modify that geometry in SketchUp. And of course, that would be a really easy way to do it because those objects are built in SketchUp anyways. But if you don't have SketchUp and you'd like to try a really powerful open source community driven setup software, it would be Blender. And so Blender can do a few things that might make this a lot easier. And at the same time, we might be able to optimize this symbol a little bit, making it a better symbol to import into Chief Architect. So I'm going to bring Blender into my main window here. And I do have an add-on. And my add-on is that I went and looked up how can I import SketchUp files natively because out of the box, Blender does not do that. Okay, so... I did go look that up. That's in a YouTube video somewhere. You can add on the ability to import SketchUp files. And so I just get to go locate my SketchUp file. And let's see, what was it called? That was a funny one. In this case, it's Component 37. So we're going to open up Component 37. And there we go. Here's our symbol. Now, because this is a SketchUp file, these objects are separate when they come into Blender as opposed to bringing them in Chief Architect where they are converted and turned to one static symbol. I still have the hierarchy coming from SketchUp. So these are individual objects. So if I wanted to get rid of this stuff, that'd be really easy. I just get to select this and delete. Bam, done. Very simple. So this is why this is a powerful tool for those of us that might be bringing in things from 3D Warehouse and we don't want to pay for SketchUp is we can come in here and delete the things that we don't want very, very easily. Another thing about this is let's just take this for example is I'm going to select all these and let's just say I do want this as one symbol altogether. So I get to select all these as an object and as an object I can join these together. And so when I join these together I can do a couple of modifications to them all as one object. All right. So that's one thing to consider. The next thing to consider and let me just show you I've joined these now these are just one object. Keep in mind, I'm no expert in Blender. I know just enough. There's just a few things that are easy enough for me to pick up. We're in some mode where I get to just highlight and select, and that's what I did, and then I right-clicked to join. Once it's joined, and again, you can look all of this up. It's easy to find this on the internet because Blender's a huge program, and it's got a lot more, um, um, there's a, a much larger user base, and so there's gonna be a lot more YouTube videos out there. So I get to put on a scene modifier and that scene modifier I'm going to do is decimate. And this is an industry standard where we're taking some kind of poly count and we're trying to redu reduce it through some kind of algorithm that's built into the software. And so you can see here, this is showing face count at 74,000. I'm going to triangulate this because I know Chief Architect's going to do that anyways. And then I just get to click a ratio and drag it down and you can see this face count number is dragging down with it. Okay, and my target is I want this in less than 10K poly. But what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the symbol itself and in real time, it is getting edited. And look at that, we finally went so low that it's no longer even recognizable. So I can drag that back up a little bit and I kind of want the, to make sure those, you know, those leaves are still showing up and that this is still looking like a symbol that I might use. And so I'm just under 10K poly now, and this still looks pretty good. Now, keep in mind, we can see that there's some kind of faceted edges here, and maybe that's not good, and maybe that won't look good in Chief Architect. But you also have to remember that Chief Architect will smooth this in a way 
in a better way than Blender does. So it can retain the shape and might look just perfect. And it takes a trained eye to kind of see where this is going to get smooth and how it's going to end up looking like. Because right now, this doesn't look that great. But when we apply some smoothing to it, it might actually turn out just right. So I'm going to go ahead and export this file now. And I'll export it as a Wavefront OBJ because that's one of the file types that Chief Architect can take. So Wavefront OBJ. Blender takes an industry standard, which is the up axis is Y. In our case, we want the up axis to be Z. And then it is going to be some scale that makes no sense to Chief Architect, but that's okay. It's actually going to be at the unit of measurement is meters, we can always convert that when we import. So export this Wavefront OBJ. And I forgot to even name it. Let's see what I even did. Let's see, I'm gonna put it in the downloads folder. And we'll say this is converted in SketchUp. Now back in Chief Architect, I get to just bring this in, but not only do I get to bring it in, I could just replace the geometry of the object that's here by opening the symbol up, getting to the 3D panel, and then replace geometry is right here. Now, you could choose anything that you want at this point. Um, and the reason I say that is because the unit of measurement is incorrect. This is kind of a backwards thing that's in Chief Architect that I hope that they fix someday. I'm going to choose that same exact one that I had before. And the only reason I'm choosing the same exact one as I had before is because now I'm going to change the unit of measurement. And this is when it's going to have us re-import something. So in fact, I should have used, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I should have used that replace geometry and find the geometry that I need. But now that I have that unit of measurement set to meters, this should be easy enough. So converted SketchUp OBJ place that it's in meters there we go it's brought in now i want you to note that the number of faces stayed the same it's eighty-two thousand. okay but in actuality when we go check this out is that when i open this up we're going to see that there we go it has been updated to nine thousand faces now when we decimated this some of the materials got changed and that's up to you this also should help you kind of understand that if you needed a symbol to split its materials up, you could set that up in Blender ahead of time before you imported it. But now we have this object, it's got that side table removed, it's been decimated down to just 94 or 9,000 poly count. So it's a nice lightweight symbol and there we go. And I'm just gonna paint a couple new textures on there and I'm all done. So. That's the easier way to split geometry up. So you can use either of these methods is use that delete surface tool, reconvert something to a symbol, etc. Now I get into a lot more symbol, advanced symbol modification into my paywalled section of YouTube. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, go check that out. Um, and then on top of that, you can always come up and open this up, get into the advanced sizing panel and set this up for stretch planes and bounding boxes so that this stretches parametrically the way that you need it to. Say you want to stretch this and maybe change the width of this, but you don't want to touch the plant is you're going to have to rotate this and get to a point where you're cutting through geometry in the middle without touching that plant. And in which case you probably would have just removed the plant. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I know this gets a little bit into the advanced size, but this is stuff we need to learn when we're trying to source uh, objects from third party places where we're not just hiring someone to make the object for us, where it's optimized for chief architect. We're just trying to find it online free somewhere. This would be some stuff that you might need to know. Cheers.